Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today I've got the new AMD RX 480 graphics card to review for you. Are you looking for the very best $200 graphics card on the market? For $200 in the summer of 2016, you're looking at it, you've come to the right video. The RX 480 is a very, very good card for $200. Now, let me be clear, there are two versions of this card. There is a four gigabyte card for 200 and an eight gigabyte card for 240. I recommend the four gigabyte card. And the simple reason why is because price to performance, value for the money, I think it's the deal. There's no harm in buying the eight gig card if you want to spend the extra money just to have the extra VRAM you can, but I don't think it's worth buying. I don't think you get value for your money. All current games will play at full HD or 1080p resolution just fine on this card at high detail or better at an average of about 60 frames per second. Whether you have the four gig or the eight gig card, it doesn't make any difference. Where you need the extra VRAM is higher resolutions and higher detail settings. But the challenge you'll run into is this card doesn't have the graphics horsepower to have all the details cranked up and play at higher resolutions. At 1440p, you will need to lower the detail down to medium to high detail in most games to get playable performance. It will play at 1440p, but at medium detail instead of high to ultra. As soon as you turn the details down to medium, you no longer need the eight gigs of VRAM even at 1440p resolution. Now I recognize that people buy graphics cards not just to use this year, but many people keep cards for two or three or more years. Three years from now, absolutely, cards are going to have more VRAM, games are gonna want more uh, VRAM, and yes, you're gonna to wanna to have more VRAM in the future when you have more performance to go with it. But games that come out two or three years from now, and I want you to think about this for a minute, they're gonna have higher detail settings, they're gonna have higher texture resolutions, and they're gonna want more performance. In order to play games two or three years from now on this card, you're gonna to have to lower the detail. At 1080p today, you can play them all at high. But in 2018, you may have to set the detail down to medium. In 2019, you might have to set the detail to low in a few games. The minute you do that, you no longer need the eight gigs of VRAM because the texture quality has been dropped in order to run on this card. So I know some people will say, well, buy the eight gig version to future proof so that you can run games two or three years from now at high detail, except you can't because the graphics horsepower is not there. I genuinely don't believe that eight gigabytes is necessary for a card with the graphics compute performance of this card. It, I just don't think it is. I think the value is in the four gig card. Now I'm not telling you you shouldn't or can't buy the 8K one if you, know, if, if you want to and it makes you feel better. If it will help you sleep better at night knowing, well, I've got enough VRAM, I never have to worry about it. All right, knock yourself out, go buy the eight gig version. I'll link to both in the description below, buy whichever you prefer. But my recommendation is the four in terms of value for the money. Let's talk about performance for a minute. I mentioned 1080p full HD at high detail or better at about 60 frames per second. And I mean that, Witcher 3, Fallout 4, Grand Theft Auto 5, Ashes of the Singularity, all the current games that are out on the market available today in 2016, at somewhere between high to ultra detail, at somewhere around 60 frames per second is what to expect. Now, I don't have them all in front of me, but I will put numbers up here during this video to give you a couple of ideas of 1080p and 1440p game performance on this card, as well as compared with the card that's closest to it in price, which is the GTX 1060. Now, I've previously done a video on the 1060, and I'm gonna be comparing the two in the same games on the same hardware to give you an idea of performance. In terms of live demos, I'm not a big fan of benchmark numbers. Because when I tell you that at very high detail at 1080p, this card will play at 50 frames per second, and at high detail, it'll play at over 60 frames a second, what that doesn't tell you is how smoothly it plays. If you've watched my prior game demonstration videos, I'm not a big fan of, bench, of just numbers, because just because the frame rate looks good doesn't mean the game is playable. How well does it respond when you press the keys, when you move around? 
I like live demos, which is why I publish so many game performance videos on my channel. I want you to see the game being played. I want to talk about it while I'm pressing the keys. If I just pre-record a video and show it to you with numbers, what you're not seeing is input lag. When I press a key, how long does it take for the character to move? When I move the mouse, how smooth is the viewing? I think that's very important. Now, this card is in fact a little bit slower than a GTX 1060, but it also costs less. So in terms of performance for the dollar, the $200 option is an excellent, excellent choice because the 1060 starts at 250 and runs very quickly to $300, so it's almost in a different price bracket. If you've got 200 to spend, if that's your fixed budget, you can buy nothing better today than the four gig version of this card. The minute you get to 240, you're starting to creep into 1060 price range and then it becomes an issue should you make the leap up to that. But at $200, that's a screaming deal and I'm all for it at that price point. Let me talk about the card itself for a minute. This is the reference card. It has a blower style cooler. They all look the same. Now it says Vision Tech on the box. I haven't even mentioned Vision Tech yet. It doesn't matter. All the reference cards are exactly the same buy whichever one's in stock. The links in the description below will take you to the search results, sorted price, lowest to highest on Amazon and Newegg. Buy whichever one is in stock. It doesn't matter whether you're buying it from, it doesn't matter what company it is because they're all exactly the same. There is no Vision Tech branding on this anywhere. It's an AMD product. It, so don't worry about that. It's a very minimalist, minimalist, minimal, if I can say that word correctly. It's a very simple design, how about that? Um, it is plastic, this is not metal, that's plastic. It's got a blower style cooler, and I like the fact that it's got a very large vent in the back. A blower style cooler, in my opinion, is recommended for any machine that either is in a small case or is a pre-built, because it exhausts most of the heat out the back and keeps the rest of your case cool. Um, they have removed the DVI uh, port on the back. There's no more DVI port on here. There are three display ports and one HDMI 2.0 port. This will run 4K monitors at 60 hertz resolution, 60 hertz refresh rate, which is good, but of course it won't game at 4K. It doesn't remotely have the performance for that. But what you could do is if you have a 4K monitor, you can use Windows at 4K. Performance in Windows at 4K is perfect. There's no issues. And then you could game at 1080p. And because 1080p is exactly 25%, it's half vertical and half horizontal, games will scale perfectly. So a game played at 1080p on a 4K monitor will still look sharp and beautiful. Not, of course, quite as sharp as 4K would be, but it will be fine. So if you've got a 4K monitor and you don't have a big budget for a graphics card, spend $200 on an RX 480, run Windows at 4K, game at 1080p and you will be just fine. Just set the game settings in the game to 1080p and you're good to go, it'll work just fine. Um, you can use any of the ports you want, they basically all support 4K at 60 hertz, so either display port or, or uh, HDMI. On the top of the port we have a six pin PCI Express power connector. Let me talk about this one. If you have Google searched, the RX 480 at all. You may have come across some articles or forum posts, especially on Reddit, from people talking about power draw issues that some of the early RX 480 cards were pulling too much power out of either the motherboard or the, or the six pin connector. That was true, but it's not a fault of the card as much as it's a fault of where AMD set the voltages and the, the, the clock speeds but they have since come out with a driver. If you go, if you buy one of these today and you download the latest drivers from amd.com, you'll be just fine. They've provided two settings to provide you with maximum compatibility. The first is called performance, which cranks it up, and the second is called compatibility to lower the settings a bit. If you're installing this into an inexpensive pre-built machine, set it to compatibility. If you're installing this into a custom machine you built or a higher-end machine, uh, even if it's a pre-built, but if it's something like um, an Acer Predator pre-built, a gaming machine, or you have an Alienware, or, or you have a nice gaming computer, put it in performance. But if you have a cheap machine, put it in compatibility. It's 2 to 3% difference in performance. It's a very minor change. We're talking about one 
maybe two frames per second. It's not a big deal, but they fixed that basically. So you've got one six pin PCI Express power connector. Of course, you got your motherboard slot on the bottom. There's no back plate on the back. You just have an exposed circuit board, but at this price point, that's all you're gonna have. And that's pretty much all there is to it, to the video card. Speaking of testing, um, I will be doing live demos and I showed this in my GTX 1060 video. I will show it to you here. I'm going to be installing this machine into this. And I highly recommend this machine. This is an ASUS M32 CD pre-built desktop computer for $375. i3 processor, great value for the money. Now this machine has a 300 watt power supply. If you look at the size of the side of the box, it'll say 500 watt recommended. In compatibility mode in the AMD driver, this card will work in this machine. I would not recommend performance mode in there without replacing the power supply. You can replace the power supply. $25 will buy you a 400 watt name brand quality power supply. You can absolutely do that. I don't think it's necessary. Run it in compatibility mode it'll be one frame per second slower, which you will never notice in the real world. I will be doing live game tests on this machine with this card, as well as the 1060 I mentioned, and comparing them. And I will also put this card into a custom-built i5 machine to show you what you get by putting it into a nicer machine. So, for $200, I like this card. Performance-wise, it'll play all the current games at 1080p, at high detail, at smooth frame rates. It's a very good card at a reasonable power draw and at a very reasonable price. Did you like this video? Click like. Did you not? That's okay too. Remember to subscribe to my channel. It's the big huge red button down there. Subscribe because that will get you notifications for when the performance videos come out to where you see me doing live performance on that machine and a custom built i5 with this card and the 1060 so you can see the differences. I've put up numbers throughout this video to give you a rough idea of what to expect but I think the live demos are more valuable. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, that goes below the video down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Do you agree, disagree? Uh, type away and let me know your thoughts. And finally, if you like this video, if you like all the videos on my channel and you want to support me, check out the links in the video description below. I will have links to this card and to the m 32 c which is an awesome machine, um, in the video description below to both um, Amazon and Newegg. And using those links will certainly help me out and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.